just because I want to I want to make sure this is clear. Okay. So so for five we think it's going to be what? Twenty four twenty fifths. All right. And so can you let's let's start in understanding down here when I when I look for no fives. All right. What happens? What's going on? Can yeah. you can you start? First, if you want to have if you want to have a five and a, if you want to have a five and a, a five in both of them, you need to have one fifth times one twenty one fifth times one fifth. Okay. Which is one twenty fifth. All right, one twenty fifth. So what's going on in the rest of the chart? Can you explain? Well, you have. Five, so no fives. Which which box are you gonna? So I'm gonna look at this box. Okay. So fives is one fifth times four fifths. Okay. So one fifth from this, four fifths from that. So four twenty fifths. Four twenty fifths. And same for here. Okay, there's sort of a symmetry argument. Sorry. And what about here? Well, there it's gonna be four fifths times four fifths. So sixteen twenty fifths. All right, and so what do I get uh, for the probability that the greatest common divisor has no fives? What do I need to do? Well, you need to add these three up. All right, so what so do I get? 24 25ths. All right. Can you see a different way from our box that we could figure out that it was 24 25ths? Well, we know the box adds up to one. Uh-huh. And then we can just subtract the one that we have, the one that has five as a common factor. Okay. Yeah. What, do you remember what that counting technique it's is called? Complementary counting. Complementary counting. So there's a complementary counting argument that also shows we get to twenty-four twenty-fifths or three fourths or eight ninths. Mm. And what is it? What what is that complementary counting? It's, you have to do the total number, which is one minus the ones that have a five. Okay. And both ones. And how? What's the only way to get a five? Well, you both five both have fives. Both have to have fives. So, so it's getting smaller and smaller. So interesting. Okay, so now we can be pretty confident that for sevens, no sevens is going to be, no seven as a GCD is going to be what? 48, 49. Okay, and then we go all the way up on the primes. To infinity. And what do we do with these numbers to get the probability? 3 fourths, 8 ninths, 24, 25 fifths, 48, 49 ninths? I think we add them. Well, because you have, these are, some of, these are some of the probabilities. Okay. Well, do you multiply or add them? All right, yeah, let's just ask that question. Do you multiply or add them to get the probability at the end that you have the GCD well, is 1? I think, I think you add them because the probability is the total good outcomes because these are some of the good outcomes. Okay. So you have to add the good outcomes, so total of the good outcomes over, over all the outcomes. Okay. Well, these are probabilities, though. So what happens when I add, say, 8 ninths plus 24 25ths? Well, well you What's that number going to be, approximately? Around, t around 2. Okay. So my probability of having no 3s and no 5s is 2? That doesn't work. So you're going to have to multiply them. Because <coughs> these are converging on 1. Yeah, so what's going to happen if you add them? What are they going to add They're up gonna to? They're going to get infinity. You're going to get really large. Yeah. So there's probably a, probably a, if, if you're trying to decide between adding and multiplying. Probably multiplying. Yeah, otherwise your probability is going to be bigger than 1. In fact, it's going to be equal to infinity. Infinity. So, let's, uh, let's, but let's take a look at what happens when I start multiplying these things together. So I'm going to have 3 fourths. 8 ninths, times 24 25ths, times 48 49ths, times dot dot dot. Well, what can we say about this product? Well, the denominator is going to be bigger than the numerator. Yeah, why? That's a good because observation. Because you know, in every fraction, the denominator is bigger. Okay. So the denominator is going to be larger when you multiply them all out. Okay, so why is that at least useful to know? Because it, it's less than 1. Okay, so we can see right away this product's going to be less than 1. Can we say anything else about this product? Well, well it's going to be very close to 1. How come? Well, what makes you say that? 
Because you have all these products that get closer and closer to 1. And you're multiplying them all together. So you should get something that's really close to 1. But you're multiplying something that's less than 1 by something that's less than 1. So you're going to get something that's less than the number. So it would be smaller. <laughs> Very good observation. Hmm. I'm, I'm, taking, I'm starting with 3 fourths and I'm multiplying it by 8 ninths. So what does that mean about that first product? Well, this is going to be smaller than 3 fourths or 8 ninths. Okay, so it gets smaller. Yeah. What about when I multiply by 24 25ths? Even smaller. Even smaller. What about when I multiply by 48 49 Even smaller. Even smaller. So what do you think now is happening for the well, product? It's getting cl closer and closer to zero. It seems to be getting closer and closer to zero. Mm -hmm. Seems like it. Yeah, but it's not zero. Is it, but does it actually converge to zero? Yeah, good question. Let's go up to the computer and see. All, All right. right.